use it some kid, regardless of how, how much success he's had this year. But uh, honestly, I think this match could go either way. I don't know which way it will. Well, we get to find out. Eyes down front and center here. It's the men's 58s. In terms of the action we've had so far, the confirmation. Tiana Bogdanovic will go against Wu Jingyu in the flyweights, the under-49 females. Maxim Bramfov of Russia. And he will have a chance to go against Milad Beji Harchigani in a super minus 80 kilogram final. Great Britain's Bianca Walton outdone by Melitza Mandic. And the Serbs into the final. And she goes against Zheng Shuyin of China. And that, of course, brings us to, well, the men's 58s in this one. In terms of opening exchanges, the customary feeling out process. A lot of running into each other, if you notice. Uh, if you're new to the sport, I mean, that's both athletes are very committed to the techniques they're trying to throw. And so, I mean, it's unstoppable force running into an immovable object. <laughs> Nicely put, indeed. But who can find the moves to get the points on the board? The blocking game or the, the cover game, as you call it in the US, working to effect so far for Amin Hadapur. And the Islamic Republic of Iran, famous for that. Very hard to score on. Yeah, very hard to score on, and on top of it, they bring some serious heat in every single one of their matches. There's not a single player on their team that is not tough as nails. Oh, the referee giving the gamjol against Amin Hadapur, as you say, that toughness. But also paying off for Zhang Chun as he tries to back it, which misses round the corner. The little short left leg in the inside from the man from Iran. 30 to go in the first. I like that attempt. It was really close. Hadi Poor's as slick and smooth in the ring as they come, so he's not going to give that up easy, but I think that's there. It is most certainly there for him, but not on this occasion. Into the last 20 seconds, back leg, turn the kick from the Korean, steps again with that back kick. Hadi Poor doing well to keep his chin right up against the head of his opponent. Yep, trying not to give up those silly points to the back side of the head. He's Jang is incredibly mobile whenever it comes to those points. Yeah, he's got the flexibility and he's got the marginal lead here by way of that one. Ready. Straight away into that close stance. Both men, the same foot in front. And that high guard from Hadapur, more than advisable. You mentioned the flexibility. As Jang Chun tries that, that drag shot down the body, he's nominated as one of the possible candidates, in fact, both men, for the male athlete of the year. <laughs> Trying to go for the headshot there was the man from Iran. I think that's the name of the game in this one for Korea. He's got to manage those quick shooting headshots, because at the end of the day, Hadi Poor's, I mean, there's a reason he's consistently on the medal stand, and it's he's sneaky, he's very smooth, and on top of it, he might be a little bit smaller, but he is just as mobile as Jack. Oh, a quick shot to the face just past the guard. I think it caught him off guard a little bit. And to get it past the guard of Armin Hadapur, not easy. Yeah, he, he definitely needs to save that highlight. Jang with also the quick shot out of the clinch, making it 6-0, but falling on falling at the end of the clinch, so taking on that deduction. 6-1 with about a minute left. Well, you mentioned Armin Hadapur always been around the podium. He's got 336 points. The next nearest contender, Mikhail Artamonov of Russia, with 333. So right in that conversation for Tokyo as he goes with that headshot. Yeah, created just a little bit of space with his hands, just enough. And all, all Hadapur needs is just a little bit of space because of how mobile he is. And he got that foot smack on that chest, on that helmet. Well, as you can see, there's two new faces that have entered the fray here. The coaching faces in the corner, and they'll be going back to face each other in a minute. You mentioned that ability to use the hand to create the space. And that, of course, we talked about the Islamic Republic of Iran's quality to get into that national team, much like Korea, you're sparring all the time. Yeah, well, and it's, uh, it's that split second explosive power. It's not something that, oh, uh, Jang is gonna let him keep his hands on him for 30 seconds. No, you've got a millisecond to create that distance. And there was the attempt again. Jang, a little bit wiser on this one this time. As you see, the milliseconds and the millimeters there, just missing by a fine margin to one point separating the two. 
Good shot on the inside there from Armin Hadapur. Was he holding the leg on the outside? Yep, the referee agreeing with that one. Makes it a two-point game with ten to go. Well, the clock ticks down on the effort of both men, Jang Chan saying, yep, that'll do me. Back to the coach he goes. As you said, both men in the ball game. Who can find a home run in this one? The third round. Good shot on the inside. Yep. Just like Hadikor, creating just in that split millisecond, just enough space to get that knee up and the foot on the chest guard. Finds the shot on the chest guard, as you say, cuts it. A fine figure now, four to the good. That's the business end of this semi-final. It's the lightest weight category for the men. The flyweight under 58s and the feet are flying. As Hadapur gets close there. He's going to adjust his toe box trousers. It's those infamous tights again. I mean, the least said the better, I think, on that one. You could say it's a tight game. Oof. And speaking of which, extending the lead nicely there. And it's worked on a few occasions, generates the gamjom as well. Good strong refereeing. And from a two-point game, well, seven to the good now for Jang Chan. Yeah, if, if I were going to put money on anybody being able to rally in a pretty amazing comeback, it's Hottie Port. He's been in this situation before, not just this situation, but at this level. Really high level, really high level matches, uh, down by a big spread, but he's got to make something happen. He's got a minute to get seven back and tie it up at least. Yeah, he's got the time, has he got the intensity? Front leg to the face, just missing. Good response from Jiang Chan. Both men going at it here in Moscow. Green coach just saying, let him come, let him come forward. Good back kick around the corner. Yep, and I think that's probably the icing on the cake. That uh, those turns with big points, absolutely the worst thing that Hadi Ford can have happen at this point. Yeah, it's gone bad to worse for the man from Tehran. But Not I mean, for a lack of trying. For either. sure, yeah. For sure. The main man in Moscow, though, Jang Chun. Both men hit the deck. Referee wisely lets it roll. Jiang Chun can he roll on into the final? There's the headshot though. Yep, that's exactly what we were talking about earlier. It's he's not out of this. Uh, Jang needs to stay engaged for this last 21 seconds, otherwise he could actually still lose this. He's got the intensity tries with a bit of creativity there. Generates the gam jump. Jiang Chun though, I mean, you've mentioned match management a few times. The Korean though will eat the punch. Is there enough time for an eight-pointer for Amin Hadipur? Needs a big run, there's the close of distance. And is he closing in on the final? Well, it wouldn't be the first time. Armin Hadapur charging forward, but the man in charge. He's been the Korean in blue. He'll take the gam jump. There's still a little bit of work to be done. But not much time in which to do it. Five seconds to go, lovely push kick. And you would fancy, Stephen, that that will seal the deal for him. Yeah, Hadipur is an amazing athlete, but uh, three seconds and this deficit, a uh, little bit too good. Yep, too good and too strong. Jiang Chun hits the deck, but he hit the heights in that one. Arguably the toughest possible matchup for him there.